Hey everybody, it's Ricky from All Sorts of Words, and today we're going to be clearing up a few things about this channel and some fun stuff. We're going to do a few things today. One is a general channel update. Two is a personal update. And then for three, we're going to be going through a trade that I recently did with a fellow YouTuber. So I'll tell you where you can see what he got out of me and we'll go into detail into what I got out of him. And it's some pretty exciting stuff. Now to begin with, we're going to... Me scusi, sir, but two minutes left until show. Okay, thanks Fritz. In case you've been living under a rock, I, as a joke for this YouTube channel, wrote a kind of pop song about having a sexual relationship with the claymation character Gumby. And I can't even explain why, but it really took off in Europe in the whole Eurovision scene. And so now I'm doing a small tour in Germany to just put my name out there and hopefully promote this YouTube channel. But anyway, wh where were we? Right. Number one. This is something I've never said on this channel and, and I've, I've never really put this out there. So I'm, I'm a little nervous, believe it or not. But so I've, I've noticed the dance that is on the YouTubes right now. You, you get a hundred subscribers, you do a special, you give a giveaway. 200 subscribers, you have a special, you give a giveaway. 300 subscribers, you have a special, you get the point. And I've just recently skated past 300 subscribers and I never did a 100 subscriber thing. I didn't do one for two. I didn't do one for three. And now I'm still probably not going to do one for four. Here's, here's the reason why. So I'm a high school dropout. I know you've, you've heard me talk about my master's degree and how I'm a college professor now. And you're absolutely right. I, I, I really did turn my life around, but I dropped out of high school. I fell into a really rough crowd when I was a kid, really tough kids. And uh, something went down when I was there. In fact, it went down in my car and uh, I, I didn't speak up because I was a, a kid and a coward. And, and you know, it, it changed my life for, uh, in a lot of ways, the worst. But the thing about high school it's not what you learn. It's not the friends you make or the football you play. None of that is as important as crossing the stage at graduation and having everybody celebrate you. That literally does something to your brain where you put in all these years of work and, and effort and now your family's there and they're saying you're proud of you and your teachers are saying they're proud of you and your friends are all going through the same thing. It makes your brain different for the rest of your life, being able to stand up in a crowd and say, I deserve this praise. But I, I didn't get that. I didn't experience that. And so when I immediately went out and got my GED, like legit, I didn't take study for the test. I didn't do any prep work. I, I just immediately went down the road and I got my GED. I passed with flying colors and it still didn't feel right celebrating because, because I dropped out of high school, didn't feel like I deserved to have a party like everybody else did. So my mother-in-law made pasta and garlic bread and she bought me a cake and it was lovely, but it really wasn't the celebration that you would imagine. And so because of that, years later, I graduate from undergrad, I, I, I finished my undergraduate degree and it still didn't feel like I deserved to celebrate. That initial skipping of my high school diploma really kind of fucked me up. So instead of an undergraduate graduation, I chose not to walk. I just took my diploma and I dipped. My mother-in-law did the same thing she did before. We had pasta and garlic bread and she got me a cake. And after years of reflection and encouragement from my wife and my extended family, I finally decided the year I was getting my master's degree, I'm actually going to do a graduation party. I'm going to invite all my friends. I'm going to invite my family. It's going to be sick. So I made the decision in March of 2020 that I was definitely going to have a graduation. The universe disagreed. And so there I was again with pasta and garlic bread and cake. Now, years later, and I am still horrible at self-promotion, which is crazy. Like 
you see all this YouTube stuff that I do, the videos and the fun that I have, and, and it is fun, and that's why I'm doing it because it's fun. But like the self congratulation portion of it, it just it doesn't come naturally to me, man. I, I really struggle with it. But I I knew I had to say something because those hundred subscriber specials, thousand subscriber specials, all that stuff. It isn't just about the person who runs the YouTube channel. It's about saying thank you to all of the people who have hit subscribe, liked, commented, showed up for the live streams. It's about showing appreciation. And so that's what I'm doing right now. If, if you're watching this video, if you've subscribed, if at any point in time you've interacted with me at all, I sincerely appreciate you. And I just want to say thank you. I know I'm not one of those guys running around giving out key issues and, and, and shit like that. But like, I really, I really appreciate you being here. And the people that I've met in the comment section are just lovely. So thanks. Me scusi, sir, but do you think you're going to be much longer? Yeah, thanks, Fritz. I told you I was filming a YouTube video, did I not? Me, me, me scusi, me, me scusi, me, me colpa, me colpa. Fritz Door. Me scusi, me scusi, me scusi. On to part number two. This is another kind of update. So back when I made this video a couple months ago, I announced that I was going to start my earnest attempt at genuine life-changing weight loss. And so I made that announcement. And then a week later was Thanksgiving. And then a couple weeks after that was Christmas. Can you guess what happened to my weight loss? I had initially just lost 10 pounds, but I, I wonder now how much of that was, was water weight at the time. And, you know, the holidays, like I fought tooth and nail, but I didn't go above my starting weight. I, I, I just, I made up that difference of that 10 pounds that I lost, if I'm being honest. Okay, here comes the uncomfortable part, uh, for me at least. My initial starting weight was 350 pounds. I could have the worst weekend in the world and gain 15 pounds over the weekend eating crap with my family. And then after a week of eating my normal diet, I would go back down to 350 pounds. I could have exercised like a psychopath and just lost a ton of weight. And, and then like after a regular couple days of just eating like I normally would, I'm back up to 350 pounds. My wife, who is a trained dietitian, says that I might have one of the strongest level sets she's ever seen. And that like a nuclear winter could take place and we'll be wandering the frozen wasteland of America together and I will still be at 300 and goddamn 50 pounds. In January, I did something drastic. I started the keto diet mid-January and I've been on keto ever since. I've got like pregnancy test strips in the bathroom and I test myself in the morning and at night to make sure that I'm still in ketoacidosis. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar, you limit the amount of carbs that you take to between 30 and 50 grams of carbs a day. And that's all you can have for carbs. And so it puts your body in a state where it says, oh crap, we're not getting the cheap expendable energy that carbs provide. We need to go right into fat stores. And so as you're losing weight, cutting calories and exercising and all of that, instead of it going to carbs first, there aren't carbs. So it skips carbs and goes right into weight loss mode. I've been doing that since mid-January and I've been running. I, I've been running every other day, like clockwork, doing a couch to 5K app, uh, this app right here. Um, I've been posting on it on Instagram, so come and follow at Ricky Cadabra right here uh, on my Instagram if you want to see those updates and, and how I'm doing. But since mid-January, as of this morning, I weigh 330 pounds. I've lost 20 pounds of weight since doing keto and running. And homie, like for a guy that carries everything in his torso, I have felt it in my pants. I have a chin line. Look at this shit. Watch my earlier videos, you don't see that shit. I'm gonna have a chin, guys! The reason why I structured this news update in the way that I did is because I believe that my inability to talk about successes and, and the results of my labor, that frustration that I have from not graduating high school and what that did to my brain, it's also made this really uncomfortable too. And you know, look, nerdy communities have never been shy about attracting people who have weight problems, and so I'm one of them. And I'm putting myself on camera and talking about it in front of all of y'all, but I'm working my ass off to try to change that. Okay, so 
that's all channel stuff. That's all personal stuff. Now let's get into some fun stuff with comics that I got in that trade. So to begin with, excuse me, sir, but the crowd, she's restless. Fritz, how's Marta doing? My wife, very, uh, como se dice, very, very pregnant, eight months. But she's so excited to turn our duo into a trio. Yes. That's good, Fritz. That's good to hear. But if you knock on that door one more goddamn time, when I send you what's left of Marta, you'll hang yourself. Do you understand me? Oh, oh, no. Oh, no. Please, please, sir. Fritz. Tell me you understand me. I, I'm, I'm so sorry, sir. Of, of, of course, I leave. I understand. Me scusi. Me scusi. Me scusi. So I recently made a trade with... This YouTuber, Big B McFly, the comic guy, uh, he had a slabbed book that I really, really wanted for my indie collection. It's a big book for me. And if you can chart the pricing, it seems to be for a lot of people as well. But as we were going through the trade, there was just a lot more that he had that I wanted. The direction that I wanted my collection to go in seemed like he could help me with that. I'm gonna leave a link in the description of his video because he already did a live stream where he unboxed what I sent him and he showed all the books. It's literally at the beginning of the video. Of course, I'd love it if you watched his video. He's a friend of the channel, but um, if you just wanna see the books, you can just see the beginning of that video and it's all right there. It was a lot of Silver Age DC keys in pretty low grade. I had this huge stack of them and I just, I needed to see him moved, you know? Because I'm refining my collection to be more super family and more indie, I that's where I'm going. So I, I got rid of a lot of my stuff and I'm really, really happy with what I got. Let's go check out the haul. Let's get started with the first books I got, which were a lot of older adventure comics, especially for the Legion of Superheroes. That is a huge run that I'm going for right now. Adventure comics, these are this is all Silver Age stuff. Um, 10 centers, 12 centers, but some of them, the quality really varies uh, from book to book, but these are all books that I'm going to read over the course of my life. I love the Legion of Hoop Superheroes so much. Sometimes they're really high grade like this, but I know a lot of people don't necessarily care about the Legion of Superheroes, but they're really big with Superboy and Supergirl. I, I love them. I love the team. I say love a lot when I talk about the Legion just because they are so cool to me. This is a cool one. The Earth on Fire. You're too late, Legionnaires. My chemical bomb has just destroyed Earth. It's another one. Superman being a dick saying, hey, you can't go into my clubhouse. You're a girl. Dr. Mantis Morlo, the chemical conqueror, and his fantastic chemoids. Can't be mad at that. Uh, Ghost of Pharaoh Lad. Oh, such a cool purple cover. Really reminds me of that first appearance of Brainiac. Here we go. Superboy, giant. Superboy's red letter days. So these are important events in his life. So the first time he experienced kryptonite as a kid. Uh, the tragic day Ma and Pa Kent died. Lana Lang uh, and Lois Lane, the feud begins right here, but look at this. The happy day crypto reached Earth. I want this tattooed on my body so bad. Uh, it seems like there's a little color printing error there because like Superman has, he definitely has a yellow belt. He always has a yellow belt. Even on this cover, he has a yellow belt, but right here it, it's white. But I love that little, little crypto boy right there. Now we get into a bunch of Neil Adams Superboy covers. This is a cool one. Dad, it's all my fault. Uh, here's one. This looks like Comic Tom. Didn't that look like Comic Tom? Here we go. Uh, another crypto cover. Superboy's clearly been taken over by some other evil entity, you can tell, because of his shit-eating grin. And then Superboy's obviously locked in some alternate dimension. 
with those sick abs still. That's nice. But Crypto, he can tell. He can tell that's not his boy. Something you need to know about these Superman comics, it's constant. It is constant that he's either being kicked out of the town or he's quitting being Superboy. And you're going to see a couple issues like this in, in this little run right here. Uh, it's Raining Men. Superboy, they're alive, my real mother and father. I'm sure, because uh, I haven't read the story that this is this is not them, but we'll find out. See, here's another one. Superboy getting kicked out of town. Get lost, Superboy. Who needs you? Superboy killing Caesar right here. Uh, this is the first Aqua Lad uh, in uh, Superboy 171. Another a, a big Neil Adams cover, famous Neil Adams cover. But again, the town's kicking him out and he's upset about it. Some shitty little kid realizes that he's actually Clark Kent and looks like he's going to start bribing him or, or some such. Superboy at his own funeral of Clark Kent. Another Superboy giant. This is the Colossal Superdog. This is the main reason why I wanted it. It's, a, it's another crypto cover. But I actually do have the Colossal Superdog book already. But it, it's nice to have this version of it as well. Here's a messed up one. Super Baby doesn't understand what he thinks is fun. Is destroying the world. And he's blowing up a what appears to be like an island. The day Super Baby blew up the world. Plus the Super Mammoth Mystery. This is perhaps the most famous Neil Adams Superboy cover. And again, it's I know it's not him quitting being Superboy or quitting Smallville, but it's him quitting Earth. There's a lot of him quitting. The Secret of Superboy's Sister. And she's on like a mattress device. And then we get a crucified Superboy. That's fun. That's just fun. Okay, now we get on to some much bigger, bigger books. Star Trek number one. I love Star Trek. This is easily like a 3-0, maybe even a 2-5. It's got a lot of damage along the spine, but it's a reader copy. And guess what I'm going to do with it? Read it, you nerds. So this is great. The first appearance of Star Trek in comic books. And I also got these other issues as well. These really awesome painted covers. Spock wearing red. This strikes me as like a Christmassy cover because it's like the red and the green and it almost, I know it's stars, but it almost looks like snow. These like plastic, they're not mylar, but they're just, they're very shiny. Uh, these, these cases that they came with are just, they're so nice. Some of these are in great condition too. But I'm a big Star Trek collector, and uh, having these books rounds out my collection immensely. <sighs> this is all first print. The first 27 issues of The Boys. It's all here. And starts off with Wildstorm, moves over to Dynamite when they picked up the production. But The Boys is it, it was a big hole in my indie collecting and the show is just so goddamn good and it's been years since i read only the first couple issues i, I never read this whole series and so the, the show hasn't even gone this far yet so i am a hundred percent going to to read these and soon but this is this is exciting 27 issues all in a row I got Christmassy cover, money cover. I love it, like an Animal House tribute. But these are these are these are getting up there because the shows it, it doesn't show any sign of, of stopping. I don't know. I don't know if next season's the last season or the one after, but the, it will end. And this. I think the show is going to galvanize these books as something special. And I, I don't see this book coming down anytime soon, um, even as the show leaves leaves the air. If, if they can end on a high note, these books will be hard to find later on. 
Um, and I'm just, I, I'm, I'm so happy I can be this close to finishing the run, like with just a single trade. Next, this is a New York Comic Con alternative cover re-release of Superman Batman number eight. This is where Supergirl got reintroduced into the DC universe after being gone for a very long time. Uh, it's a Michael Turner cover. And this is Supergirl number one, another New York Comic Con exclusive Michael Turner cover. This one and this one, uh, this is the other one that I got. It's a number one Michael Turner cover. These, they are so hard to find. The, this, this set, they're so hard to find on eBay. And um, I, there are slabbed copies of for sales, a few raw ones of this that I found, but um, he still has the original price for what was paid for at Comic-Con. Uh, but being the Supergirl fan that I am, I love these. We kind of just like, he just wanted to get rid of this. It's, it's a signed Kabuki masks of the something. It, I don't know. I, I don't read Kabuki, uh, but it, it was an indie book. And the guy was like, look, it's, it's not a perfect book. It's got a signature on it. It's got a COA. Do you want it? And I think we did like $5 worth of value on it, but I'm happy with it. Uh, back to some Superman, just an old 15 center action comics. A giant size Lois Lane. And the reason why I wanted this one is because this takes stories from the other Lois Lane books. That's what a lot of these giant uh, issues do. And so I got this one. Uh, this is the last Lois Lane book, right? The, uh, this is the last book that I got aside from the slab in that collection. But it's like a Kissing Cousins cover where it's Clark and Kara. And it's it looks, it appears to be at least that this is the same story. That it's going to be telling so i'll be interested when i read this to tell you if this is if it's the same thing and last but not least the big book that i really wanted in this collection the thing that kicked this off the reason why i wanted to trade with bigby in the first place was for this book this is a, an 80 dreamwalker number zero and that tells you right there why the goon preview by eric powell predates goon number one so this is and if you look it up in key collector they acknowledge it as well this is the first appearance of Goon. Goon is an awesome indie character that has a story with a beginning, a middle, and an end with amazing, beautiful art by Eric Powell. And this slab marks a big turning point for my collection because this book, the cheapest you can get this book right now in a 6.5 on eBay at this moment is $300. And it's just going up as, as these... 90s it's a 98 but as these 90 books 90s books are getting more popular they're leaving the market and people are hanging on to them once they realize like what a cool character goon is it, it really is an amazing character i hate leaving so soon but fritz is going to jump off a building if i don't get out there so thank you so much for coming by the channel thanks so much for hanging out with me and uh, i'm going to go do this little stupid performance and <laughs> see if it helps out the youtube algorithm love you bye like you lost another one. I fuck Gumby Before you say that's dumb He can fill that pussy with clay and cum And you don't need an ID or passport Don't fret Because when he takes you to London He's the jet Except the worst part is You have to enter through his butt cheek And there's no in-flight movie That's weak But the best part when you land there to meet you Are his best friends Pokey, Prickle, and Goo Ooh.